Hey everybody, my name is Peter and I was at the Golden Mountain Enduro a couple of weeks ago in Romania and I filmed the entire race from day one, two and three. Didn't get everything on the second day due to lack of battery and I wanted to go back for myself to analyze what I did right and, did I, and what I did wrong. Mainly I'm looking at what I did wrong because I think that's where I can actually improve and learn something. So if I were to do anything different, this is what I do. This is also what I'll be remembering and hopefully this is something that you can use if you want to come down and, and do the Golden Mountain Enduro or something similar. All right, let's jump into it. So the first one is that uh, you really got to respect the new terrain. And uh, in my case, I felt like in retrospect, I could have spent a little bit more time or just sitting behind faster riders and learn from their technique because they know the terrain, they know the grip and they definitely know how to ride in their backyard. And sometimes I had the chance to follow a guy like Norbert, who was the winner of the race. He also won the Enduro Panorama and he's the Romanian Hard Enduro champion. And I feel like I should have um, maybe tried to hang on a little bit closer to him for a little bit longer. But uh, uh, generally I try to hang on for as much as I can. So I think that's a, a lesson that people can definitely take away from my experience. Get that free riding lesson, lesson from the locals and just try to stay on them for as long as possible. I know it's really hard because you're looking at your, your the trail and what's happening right in front of you, but you're also trying to look at him and try to copy paste if, he, if you see him doing something really, really cool. Not cool, but great and fast and efficient and like a smart, good technique. So that's my first point. Second point is you gotta know where to look. Try to look ahead while you're also focusing on what's happening right in front of you. Because I do feel like um, the further ahead you can look, the better choices you can make uh, in the moment. But it's all kind of a give and take. You can't always be looking too far ahead because then you'll be missing a, a little rock or a little lock or whatever. And it'll catch your front wheel and you'll be on the ground before you know it. But do try to scan the terrain if you can. Look ahead, look down, look ahead. Also in order to avoid uh, overshooting um, the trail. Okay, so here is another point. Avoid making bad worse. With that, I mean on the second day of the race, I kind of thought I was going the right way, but it turned out I wasn't. And I got myself into a really shitty situation where I had to, it was all of a sudden incredibly technical and nobody had been there before me, but it was one of these places where I just couldn't see where I needed to go. So I thought I was on the right way. It turned out I wasn't. So I lost a bunch of time on the second day at the end of the day, it didn't matter how much I lost there because I lost tons more later in the race. But um, yeah, if you're in a bad situation and there's no trail or any tracks in the trail, then turn around. Okay, so be ready to push from the start. This is a hard enduro, so you never know what the organizers are going to throw at you. And this section right here is from a um, kind of a riverbed, a small creek, but very steep. And with these incredibly snotty slippery green kind of rocks that made it impossible for for me at least to ride it and as you can see in the video uh, the guys in front of me and the guys behind me were all struggling helping each other to get up and uh, this was the day where i had a bad tire set up but i'll talk more about that later uh, anyways my point here is that you have to be ready it could be just around the corner within the first couple of minutes you need to get off the bike and push and really uh, just try to do a little bit of warm up on the bike, off the bike, do some stretching, whatever you feel like you need to do to have a functioning body temperature and whatever to, to get ready for the race. All right, mud holes. So this is at the end of that before mentioned section and we're almost out. I'm super happy to be out of this. And I see the guy in front of me, he's struggling a little bit to get out uh, of uh, the creek and he's kind of stuck. I should have paid more attention to the fact that he was almost stuck and only barely made it but stupid me i just went for it and i got stuck so bad and i probably spent at least five minutes maybe even more just sitting there not sitting there just trying to get myself going again get out of that deep 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 mud that was just uh, you know absorbing my my rear tire and my rear wheel and uh, yeah try to not take these chances with mud because sometimes it's just much stronger than you and you can't really you can't muscle your way through it. So pull straps is incredibly important. It turned out that there are many times I had to pull my bike back on the uh, trail from falling off the trail or help somebody uh, pull them up the, the hills. And at the end, it, um, it cost me a lot of uh, back pain because when you're lifting from the front, uh, rear fender or in the seat or wherever you can grab onto the bike, you spend so much more energy 
because you're only like grabbing with with a little bit of your fingers you're not really um you know holding on to something like you do on a strap where you have a much more solid like an iron grip on your pull strap so it's really important you get good pull straps and don't rely on just the plastic or the uh, seats what gear to start on on the uphills i learned throughout the event that uh, starting in first was sometimes really good just to go really slow but other times if you had to really get on the gas and, and clear some long ass hill then you would definitely need to start in second just to carry that extra speed with you and uh, it took me a little while to get used to how hard as you get on the gas but it's basically like doing a motocross start you got to get on it second gear on a 300 cc there is no way you're starting in first and um, it took me a little while to get back into the swing of how aggressive you need to be to get up the hills here all right keeping momentum a lot of the challenges in a race like gold mountain duro is to get up the hills these hills are endless and i guarantee if you're not used to running to riding this kind of terrain you'll be surprised of how long these hills actually are and uh, for some freaky reason it turned it, it's often the case that the further up you get the more difficult it becomes so see if you can just carry your momentum as long as you possibly can and try not to uh, to bite the hill over in two see if you can just keep going keep going keep going and at the end of the day that comes down to not only your technique but your physique it's really hard i find it to sit very close enough to the handlebar in order to prevent the wheelies uh, once it starts wheeling either you let go of the gas or you blip the clutch but either way you're losing forward momentum so it's really important to be super strong and, and have a really good technique and uh, okay so this is a case where i was riding and up in front of me was my friend alex tower no actually he was behind me at that point and i turn around because all of a sudden i look down and i see i'm totally off the track and i can't see tape so I turn around and I go against the traffic and I meet him and I try to be really cautious and I'm, I'm honking the horn as much as I can just to avoid a potential collision. And I turn around and I see, well, there's obviously a lot of uh, tire marks on the ground, but I'm totally off the track. So at the end, I just go back to where I was. I lost a little bit of time, but what do you do when your GPS is totally off track? You kind of second guess what's going on and at the end of the day, these guys, they take your track and overlay it with the original track. And if you're more than 25 meters off the actual racetrack, they would penalize you. But for next time, I guess if the track is super marked, I mean, really, really uh, heavily ridden in, then I'll just stay on it and ignore the GPS. Next point is how to safely get down steep hills. Uh, when it's really steep and really slippery, you're at high risk of crashing and you're at high risk of um, gaining more speed than you want. So what I do on the really, really steep hills is first of all, I take a chill pill. I try not to force the issue, but I also turn off the engine just to make sure that if I do lose control, the bike is not going to get extra speed and get into extra trouble and I need to pick it out of an extra deep hole or whatever. So it's really important for me that I turn the bike off when I feel insecure, when I feel like this is more, this is deeper than I want it. And I sometimes I walk next to the bike, kind of skiing, just put my arm on the on the seat and uh, push the bike down so it doesn't front flip if there's good grip in the terrain. But in this case, it wasn't good grip, it was just super slippery. And uh, I turned the bike off many times just to make sure that the bat didn't get into worse. Brake pedal getting jammed. This is something that I should have prepared beforehand. I knew it, I just, a little bit rusty. I'm not really in race mode. But as you see in this video, I got a branch stuck on my rear pedal and it just uh, slammed the rear brake for me. And it happened not only that time, it happened probably two or three times throughout the event. And it's something that you definitely want to avoid and it's not hard to avoid. What you do is you just uh, wire, you put a wire on one of the screws to the frame, straight to the rear pedal. And that way you don't run the risk of a little branch getting stuck in there. Here's a really important one. Never give up. Keep trying until you succeed. This video is from day two on a hill that I just couldn't get up. It took me, I don't know, five times, five tries. And it was one of these wood puller lines, or at least I, that's how I remember it. And I don't know, I want to blame my rear tire because everyone knew, I found out later, that I had a really bad tire setup with the moose on the second day of the race. And it was one of those really, really frustrating times because I felt like I, I was doing good. And every time something like that happens to me, I get incredibly frustrated with myself. And um, yeah, I guess my point here is never give up. Try to see if you can, you can calm your angry, upset mind down and be 
be productive, be realistic with what's happening and just go back, try again, didn't work, go back, try again. And eventually you're gonna get up. So keep trying. Next point is alerting people. I'm really happy that my bike had a uh, horn on it, which helped me tremendously in passing people because I was this race was a combination of A, B and C. And from time to time, we'll be on the same track, uh, all of us, which is referred to as like the common track. And then from time to time, we do the loops. And uh, I would do one loop and then I would, you know, rejoin with everyone else. And sometimes I'd meet people that go way f slower than me. And in order to avoid any kind of collision or misunderstanding in, in where to pass, then I, I find it super helpful to use the horn. Just let them know that you're coming. And I try to do it when I'm kind of far away from them. So they have a really good chance of preparing themselves to move over just a little bit. All right, all right momentum. Something that's incredibly important is the momentum. And I'm showing you this clip, which is from a little riverbed that is not very hugely complicated, but it's just one of those rivers where you want to try to keep momentum. And I find that riding in second or maybe even third gear sometimes is the thing to do. You pretty much never want to go down into first gear in these riverbeds because you'll be just wheel spinning. It'll be unnecessary and useless to be having that aggressive engine under you. So I find that staying in second and third and try to look far ahead and, and definitely see where the trail is going because in a riverbed, it can become very, very difficult to see, even if 20 people have been there before you or 200, because it's water, it just clears the path away. So really try to look around and see if you can find where people have been and make your decisions early on. It will save you so much energy and it will make you much more relaxed. It will bring your heartbeat down and uh, generally just uh, a good thing to do. All right, so you uh, got to have some really, really good upper body strength especially if you sign up for A-class, which was the one that I signed up for. But also further down in B and C, everything can be uh, to the limit of impossible because difficulty is such a relative term. I find that you need to be extremely strong in your upper body muscles because many times you just can't ride the terrain, especially if it rains and the organizers don't adjust for the temp or the climate change. Then you just be pushing your bike, literally just push your bike with the engine barely or the tires barely moving. And I find that the stronger a person you are, the more physically fit, the more cardio you've done uh, before you came to the race, the better you're gonna, the better chances you're gonna have at, at getting through these sections quick and without making mistakes, and eventually lead you to a better experience and a better result. So get fit. Um, bup, 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 bup. So another uh, thing I experienced here is that it's really important if you can to learn from the other riders and stay behind for as much time as you can. But when I said that, I was I was I was referring to the beginning of the race, uh, maybe the first day, uh, maybe some of the second day. But once you start figuring out the terrain, if you start figuring out your fellow riders, your opponents, or whatever you want to call them, then I guess it's time to uh, to race. And I found that. The, the faster I could get up in front of a bunch of these riders that I knew was a little bit better in the technical section than me, the better, because once I would get to that section, at least I knew if I'm in front of them and I can't move on, they are gonna help me sooner or later because I'm blocking the only way to get through. Try to be in front of people um, when it's easier on the trail or on the racetracks, get some speed, make up some ground. And if you can, catch, if you can pass, pass people when it's easy, then it's probably gonna help you when it's really hard. All right, so the correct tire pressure. I learned so much about tire pressure and tire setup throughout the event. And I also learned that people, they tend to start with one tire pressure in the morning. And once they get to the first really, really difficult hill, they lay their bike over and they take out the, the air to the point where they think this is what they need to get up that hill. I would argue that it's better to have the right tire pressure from the beginning of the race and then just keep it there all day. Because at the end of the day, you're losing time sitting there uh, taking out air pressure, but at the same time, you're losing a little bit of time and comfort on the fast parts of the racetrack because you have a flatter tire, which is never nice. But I do think that it's better to get to that really hard section and not have to go down there, screw off that on the valve and find a little stick and poke it into the valve and get out air and screw back on. And people are screaming at you because everyone's stressed, everyone wants to go and they don't want to wait for you sitting there. So yeah, try to get the right air tire pressure from the beginning of the race. Don't knock yourself over, which is something that almost happened here. And this is, um, fuck, I can't remember his name, I'm sorry, but he was the beta guy and he rode with number one at the Golden Mountain Girl. 
So I guess he won the race uh, the year before or he signed up first. Anyways, so he's here on this section that is a very, very technical trail. And um, it's kind of off camera. Obviously, it's hard to see on the GoPro because it always abbreviates the, uh, the angles to the sides. But uh, the fact is that when you're riding something that off camber and basically there is there's a very, very little trail, it's it's really bad trail. It's so easy for your foot pick to catch that rock. And if you catch that rock a little bit uh, in it, unintentional, then there is a good chance that it just knocks you over. So you can see how he is just uh, walking the bike over super slow. And I did the same right after him. And my point with this point is that be really careful when you you realize or you see in the terrain that this kind of trail is coming up don't try to ride it because the uh, risk versus reward is, is super high right here and uh, i would just recommend walk it and really pay attention to where your foot pick is all right so the last thing is the fuel stops at the race on both days i managed to get in from the wrong side or maybe it was intentional from the organizer's side i'm not sure they could probably uh, recognize uh, they could see on the video if they see this video that I came in against the traffic on, on both times and um, yeah, a little bit of a misunderstanding, I guess, but uh, try to come in from the right side if you can to avoid collisions. All right, so uh, that was pretty much my breakdown of my own race at the Golden Mountain Enduro. I'm sure there's a ton more to say, but those were kind of the points that I wanted to share with you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. It's definitely going to be my little uh, um, reference for next year's race and um, things I want to remember. So now it's on YouTube. It's out there in the open space. You can use it, you can share it, you can uh, do with it what you want basically. And if you enjoyed this video, then I do thank you ahead of time if you leave a comment, if you like this video, and of course, if you subscribe to my channel so uh, all this video making makes any sense. All right, see you in the next video.